Today we're changing the engine on a third gen Prius. Uh, does it even need one? Nope. We got plenty of them though, so let's do it. Okay, first you get the standard screwdriver from the kit. Take off that plastic clip. You have three 14 millimeter nuts. This one gets a little tricky. You want to push down on it first. That'll loosen it up to get it off. You have these little clips going across the length of it. This one's actually going to be missing. Of course, with the high mileage uh, Prius like this, there are going to be some parts missing. Take the screwdriver, go under the clip, lift it up and go down the line. That one's off. Those ones are already off. Lift it up. Bring it back about half inch. Don't worry about bending it. These pieces may fall off. The edge pieces there. The edge pieces like this one did. Just connect them back. Next you're going to get the extension and the 10 millimeter socket. So it's going to be this setup. 10 millimeter extension ratchet. You have one, there's a bolt missing here, and those. Your windshield wiper motor is connected by a clip and you push, if you hold it like this, you're pushing up with the index finger and pull it away. You have these that are zip tied in with little plastic clips. That standard screwdriver, again. I'm going to flip it upside down, actually it just fell off, but otherwise we'd be compressing those. That clip. This clip. They're all the same. I like to put this off to the side. Just wrap it around the side of the mirror. Now you're going to have all of these silver bolts. One, two. They're all throughout. This car is actually missing some, but you can pretty much see which ones you're going to take off. Okay, now to pull it up easily, this plastic and that plastic, you just going to bring it over, bring that one over, and that extra bolt. Next, intake box. Next on the intake box, you take off that clamp right there, 10 millimeter, that 10 millimeter, that 10 millimeter. There's one missing right here. That one. And uh, let's uh, keep recording. We should have one more to show you, or two more. Don't pull hard because the wire is still going to be connected. You're going to push with your thumb and disconnect that. Under here, you're going to have two more bolts to take off. The other one he pointed out was this one? Yes. Holding on the air box. Let's 
job is a lot quicker with uh, guns, but I understand not everybody has guns. You gotta disconnect or you gotta unclip this hose that goes across it. You're gonna pull it up out of the seats. Wraps once around the pull, back. Yes, once you pull those, that hose out of the seats, this guy will just come in two pieces. Okay, we gotta take off the wheel. It's a 21 millimeter socket. It's loosen up the lug nuts with the wheel on the ground and the e-brake on. Shouldn't be too difficult. What tool are you using? 21 millimeter socket, half inch. A hand half inch ratchet. Okay. And now we gotta jack it up. Okay, now we need to jack up the vehicle. Show you the placement right here. Put it under the frame, right next to that metal plate, right here. Start going up. Once the tire gets off the ground, about three, four inches, you'll be able to put the jack stand on. Right, look over here. Put the jack stand right next to it. There's a, a very thin piece of metal sticking down. That's what's gonna hold the jack stand. Is gonna hold it up right there. Set it down, and then always keep tension back on the jack. Now, tires off. We're gonna place it under the frame next to the jack stand. as a third point of contact That's for, for safety. added safety. Okay, next you grab the short 14 millimeter socket along with the 3 8 drive ratchet. You're gonna attach it to a drain plug, just like that. We're gonna loosen it up. Make sure you have a drain pan below to catch the oil. Okay, so now um, it's drained. You're gonna put the oil plug back on because you need to have uh, dripping on the ground while you're working. Make sure it's tight. That'll um, prevent you from forgetting to do it later. Now you're going to get a, a flathead standard screwdriver in the kit and do these clips. You're going to reach behind the center ring just like that. Some of these clips will break when you take it out. Just make sure you get new clips from AutoZone or O'Reilly or Advanced or the dealer. This one's already out. I can do these four clips. One, two, three, and four. The AC clip, I'm gonna pull up with my finger. Like that. That allows me to push the button. Let's see here. Right there. Push it with my knuckle. one down with the thumb and out knock sensor and throw out this one's a two-hand you know grab the wires not pulling by the wires just pulling them out of the way pushing in with my thumb and pulling it up now this one right here takes the standard put the standard right behind it and pull. Remember, do not pull by the wires. This one right here, I'm going to push down with your thumb and pull out. Just like that. Now the fuel injectors, actually this guy right here. Now we can get to the fuel injectors. Go underneath here. Using your thumb, push the clips in and pull up. Remember, do not pull by the wires. Wires will come out. There you go. 
using the 10 millimeter extension and the 3 8 ratchet i'm going to take off 10 millimeter bolt right here it's actually missing on this car those two right here that ground wire the two tens holding in the reservoir the 10 millimeter nut right here and if you look between those two hoses you'll see a 10 millimeter bolt down there okay with those bolts all removed now we can take out this bracket just to uh, pull the hoses out and push this down at the same time and you twist it it's gonna pop out like that and the last bolt is right here you can use just the socket without the extension get to it okay next we're gonna take off these three clips the o2 sensor oil pressing oil pressure sending unit and the crank position sensor crank position sensor is on the bottom you just push up with it and it'll slide out oil pressure is on the top use your index finger and pull down slide out and then the o2 sensor is on the back of it push that tab in and pull them apart don't pull by the wires Now we're uh, behind the engine, we just took off those three wires. We're gonna use our finger, pull that little tab out and push the wire away from the clip like that. Okay, next, take off the 10. You could take off the zip tie if you like instead, but we, I like to take off the 10. I already loosened it up with the ratchet. Also, next is going to be this clip. Pull the tab back, lift it up. Pull that tab back, lift it up. I'm going to squeeze this in. Remember, do not pull by the wire and pull back. The coils, however, we need to use a standard to take those off because squeezing this in most cases doesn't allow it, it to unclip and pull off. So we're gonna get a standard, pop in front of it, pull that. come around here we have this one this one and this one to take off I'm gonna small uh, those pliers, close pliers and push this one in pull out the EGR that one. the cam sensor is a little tough because the wires are very they, they get pulled out very easily Use the small hose pliers from the kit. We're going to squeeze in that tab on the left and very lightly pull up. Don't pull up hard. These wires might be pulled out. Come back here. See one more tab all the way back here. Right here, come down a little more. This tab right here, we're gonna pull that back and pull the whole system up. It. Normally there's another clip here that attaches to that piece. You just take it off the same as you did those other clips. Now with all the wires disconnected, we can fold and tuck the main wire harness. Next is going to be this bolt and taking off the intake. Okay, next we're gonna take off this hose here. You can twist this, pull down. It'll come off pretty easy. I'm gonna use the deep 12 millimeter socket from the kit. Loosen that one. Get this out of the way. A little long. And then we can take this hose and tuck it back here by the strut mount. You have easier access to this bolt. Same tool. This time you're pulling it. And remove this one. Okay, you have this plastic cover. I'm gonna take off with the 10 millimeter deep socket.
There's also two 10 millimeter bolts behind it we're going to take off right now. That one, and there's one below using the same tool, 10 millimeter deep socket. Loosen it up. Loosen up the one below. And then uh, just, you just use your fingers and do it. Next, we're gonna take off the intake. We start with the hoses connected to it. This hose right here, and then the one that goes into the head back here. You use straight, you know, those pliers from the kit, grab the clamp and pull it back. I don't take it too far. Same with the back side, but you're gonna grab it from the front and then twist it as you bring it up to get room. Next, you're gonna use the small hose pliers from the kit, wrap it around the hose and twist it so it loosens and then just pull it off. Same with the front. Twist it till it's free and then pull it up. Okay, with the hoses removed, we can now remove the intake. There's three bolts and two nuts holding it on. We're gonna use the long extension and the deep 12 socket, three eighths, to remove it. You can just bend this out of the way, it's fine. This one also acts as the oil dipstick mount. Okay, I'm gonna remove these. This one, sometimes the bracket comes with it, sometimes it doesn't. Just take it off. Now we're gonna pull the intake off. Once you do, It'll still be semi-attached to the engine by the PCV valve. This hose is not that tight. You can just slide it off with your hand and then pull the intake out. Okay, next we're gonna start removing the motor mount. I have the deep 14 3 8 comes part of the kit. There's a bolt right in between these two under the, the mount in front of the black bracket. Make sure it sets it off. Slide it upwards. It's it caught. Start it as far over as you can. And pull towards the driver's side. Or the passenger side, excuse me. And you can reach under with your hand and it'll be loose enough to just spin off. Alright, this is the one that he's talking about. It's going up on the motor mount. Next, we're going to start loosening the bolts on the upper part. We need to move the reservoir out of the way. Set it to the side. There's three bolts holding this on. They're 17 millimeter. Use, use the half inch 17 millimeter socket with the medium half inch extension. Comes with the kit. They might be a little tight, but with some elbow, elbow grease you can get it. On the back, this one is actually missing one too, but it would be right here under the AC lines. Yeah, there's so there's one bolt already missing, but there would be three holding down the black bracket. And then we have these two, same tool. Start with the nut. Loosen it a little, and we about halfway up. We loose, start loosening the other one, and the engine will start dropping as you do this. Now you notice by doing this, the engine is going to drop a little. You don't want to do just one and then the other, or it might get caught on the stud from the 14 we took off earlier. We want to kind of go back and forth with each one. Comes down a little more even. Okay, these are finished. So next we're gonna use the eight millimeter socket, three eighths drive. 
on the actual stud. Sometimes it'll be tight. Sometimes you can just do it by hand. with all the bolts now we can remove the motor mount don't be worried about pushing these uh, AC lines a little far forward while you do it we're gonna take it out from behind where the reservoir was and it'll come right out okay now we're gonna take off the other half of the motor mount this black bracket here there's three 14 millimeter bolts holding it on all around it we'll show you on this other engine over here there you go and we're going to use the deep 14 that comes in the kit like this cool. okay next we're going to start removing the egr Start with the stud in the front. So you use the deep 12 socket, it comes with the kit. Loosen up that nut. Once it's a little loose, then you can use the E8 torque socket. 3 8 comes with the kit. And that'll be how to remove the stud. Slide it on there. Sometimes they're a little tight, but just turn it and it'll come out. It's bending. Okay, also, we're gonna, we gotta remove this large hose. So we're gonna use the straight needle nose from the kit to move the clamp down. Pinch it like that, hold it down a little bit. Then we're gonna use the large hose clamp pliers from the kit. Grab it and twist until it breaks free. Then you can just pull it down as you're spinning it and it'll pop off like that. Okay, next we're gonna move this clip right here out of the way. I don't know if you will, you'll be able to see, just push it out the standard and you're gonna pull it this up. It's like the tabs on the the valve down wire harness. Once that wire is out of the way, then we grab the deep socket 12, the medium extension out of the kit. We're going to bring it all the way down between this area right here. We're gonna spin it to get to the nut at the bottom of this. Now, we have an engine here used as a display. This is the nut we're going for. Here's the EGR cooler. We're going down, we're going to it. Now you can reach across the engine and feel with your finger. You're gonna turn it. Once it's loose, you can use your finger to do the rest. Okay, now that's loose, pull it back. Next, we're gonna get the fuel line out of the way. So you're going to pull this little tab back and open up. And this is what it looks like when you're pulling it off. So I put it back together. You'll see these yellow tabs on both sides. You're going to squeeze and pull. So you're going to squeeze both ends and pull it up. Drape it over here. So that'll get us to come around this corner that stud and the stud below. If you look at this engine, this is where the studs are located. You can do those two nuts right there. And you're going to use the 12 millimeter wrench that comes with the kit. Okay, next we're gonna take off the water pump right here. 
And we're gonna be using the Deep 12. Comes in the kit, 3 8 I'll show you over here on this engine where the bolts are. You can see about three of them from above, but there's five on this. And you can reach them all from that side of the frame with the 12, like this. You'll be able to loosen them. These two right here in the front, the AC line might be in the way. So you're gonna use the 12 wrench. Comes with the kit. Get in front of it like that, pull up with it, get them loose. And remove all those and the water pump will fall off to the side. You can pull it out. Okay. And here's the water pump. Okay, next we're gonna remove the thermostat housing with the thermostat inside. Um, to start, we're gonna move the uh, oil dipstick. We're gonna use the deep 12 and the medium extension that comes in the kit. You don't wanna damage the wires to the knock sensor. The short one will fit, but you might be putting undue pressure on the knock sensor wires. Light though. But remove this. 12 millimeter bolt and then you can push this to the side it'll kind of twist now there's three tens two nuts and one bolt that hold on the thermostat before we show you on the other engine we're going to use the long extension three eighths and the deep 10 millimeter socket to take this off let's come over here you can see so there's the two here as i said and then one behind it, you get a good angle there. Yeah, you can see it right there, one behind it, and that's the bolt. You'll be able to fit with the long extension in the 10 and the 3H ratchet. It'll fit on like this, and as long as you move the oil dipstick, you'll be able to get to it. And we did the, all the nuts on the EGR earlier. We now have room to move the EGR out of the way, slide it to the side, and then pick it up. You'll be able to pull it out. We don't have to remove it completely, unless you need to clean it or want to replace it. Otherwise, twist it and set it up here out of the way. Be sure to uh, uh, not drop this from behind when you're pulling the EGR up because uh, it falls and some people cannot find it. Now, one of the other hidden bolts that you will need to take off is actually going to be a 12 millimeter bolt. It's going to be below this hose. You're going to use the deep socket 12 millimeter on the 3 8 drive ratchet. You want to reach in just like that down here. As you see, we already removed it, but it's going to be right below the hose holding on the bracket. The second one will be holding this one. Let's see if I can get the flashlight in there. See that hole right there. It's very bright. Yeah. It's right it's up there. It is. That hole, hold on a second. That hole right there is the other 12 millimeter. Why don't you take both those off? This whole metal pipe will be loose. I take off the hose clamp here, remove the hose, and push it back. So, move these two, these two hose clamps, squeeze and slide. Now that the metal pipe is loose, we're going to um, break this free of the, um, the outlet pipe on the <clears throat> cylinder head. Sorry about that. And kind of, we're gonna push that away. Using the larger hose pliers, we're gonna break free this one inch hose. And just grab and twist. There we go. We're gonna lose some coolant out of it. So make sure you have a tray below the transmission. Let's get that EGR out of the way. Temp sensor. 
There's one 12 millimeter bolt that holds on this wire harness up to the cylinder head. It's missing on this, but it would just normally be right there. Okay, next we need to remove the 12 millimeter bolt holding on the bracket for the, the power lines to the AC compressor. We need to remove the AC compressor. There's three 12 millimeter bolts here directly below it and about right here under the AC compressor, straight down from the thermostat pipe or water outlet hose. And then this 12 holding on the oil, oil uh, dipstick so that we can move it to the side and remove the thermostat hose from here. And next is these two 14 millimeter bolts on front of the engine here going into the transmission. Now it's hard to record the camera angles uh, of all the, uh, the engine, the transmission bolts that you need to take off. But uh, here they are. These are the two that are in the front below the intake. There's two up top. There's one right here, right uh, below where the alignment pin is. This one you can reach from back behind uh, under the EGR. These four you can do from under the engine. And these are the two that were in the front again. Okay, we've taken off all the transmission bolts on the bottom and the front, and now we have to the last two on top. The, the one right here in the front, under this orange wire, leave this one until the end once you have the cherry picker all hooked up so the engine doesn't start to separate until you're ready to go. Now, however you hook up the engine to your cherry picker is up to you. We just use these old engine uh, brackets from GM. Uh, it's old Pontiac, actually. That one right there, this 12 going in right here. This cherry picker we just got from Harbor Freight. It's a two ton cherry picker, but the one ton will work just fine. Nice, nice good strap. Okay, before we take off this last 14 millimeter bolt right here holding in the engine, we're gonna make sure we get a good amount of tension on the cherry picker. That's pretty good right there. Now we can safely remove that bolt without worrying about the engine dropping. Now that the last bolt is out, the engine actually dropped away from the transmission a bit. Now these are these cars are a little different than other cars. We don't have to worry about disconnecting a torque converter because there is no torque converter on this. So we can just pry the engine away. These these uh, uh, alignment pins, sometimes they get a little stuck. You have to pry a good amount. You have to work with the cherry picker, but it'll, it'll come out, you work it enough. So you got Okay, with the engine out, we got a few things to swap over. Coils if you want, exhaust manifold, uh, the Prius version of the torque converter and the flywheel behind it. And then the knock sensor and the fuel rail finally and the fuel injectors.
A little, a little farther in. Okay. Okay. I have to go back a little bit. Just start going down. Okay. Okay, now the engine is almost lined up, but the splines on the transmission don't line up yet to the engine. So we're gonna use a 19 millimeter and some long extensions to spin the motor until the splines line up while we're putting constant pressure on the engine to try and push it into the transmission. As you can see here in the video, the gap, it's pretty close, but let's do it now. There you go. You see how it's sunk in like that? Yep. Now we can keep pressure on it and get some bolts, start lining, start sucking it in with the transmission bolts. See Manuel and his muscles holding it in. You one of the longer ones. Start up here. You can see you can easily get some threads going. Now I can get my power tool and make sure it's locked in. start putting in the other ones and suck it up evenly from the back to the front and bottom and top. Okay, once all nine of the 14 millimeter transmission bolts are put back in, just start putting everything back together in the reverse order that you took it out. All right, this is the AC, just pick it up. You see these little alignment pins right here, top and bottom, sit in there nice and easy, and put the bolts back in. There's Jack putting in the oil. 020 synthetic, four and a half quarts. Okay, we're gonna add the coolant. Take seven and a half quarts, Asian red, or pink, whatever. Uh, this one's pre diluted, but if you make it concentrate, that's fine. Seven and a half quarts. All right, you lit liquors, it's done. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I guess start it, yeah. Yeah, start, yeah, start it up. All right, storm came in, so we lost a little light, but there you go. Nice running, brand new engine, third gen Prius.